The Strategic Hot Box with Dr. Brandy Love Stankovic. Discussing leadership, business, and how to take control of your life and achieve greatness. From the streets of Las Vegas, energized, informed, and never diluted. It's time to kick some ass. Hey, it's your girl, Dr. Brandy Stankovic, here on the Strategic Hot Box, and today's episode is called Rainbow Allyship. And we have our subject matter expert here today with us. Lisa Kennecke is going to join us here in just a second. Here on the Street Cop Box, we learn, we love, and we kick ass. As an ally of LGBTQ+, it is important for us to be willing to listen and learn, recognizing the importance of, of diversity and recognizing the importance that, hey, we don't know it all. I do not know it all. And how can we continue to learn from one another and continue to absorb information and listen more and ask questions? And one of the amazing and one of the most amazing things from my perspective of the LGBTQ plus community is the depth of diversity within it. And you cannot always tell somebody's sexual identity, somebody's sexual orientation or gender identity expression or any of those pieces just from an external perception. And so having the respect, asking the questions, learning from them, practicing inclusion are so powerful and so important. And it's a way for us to, to show and share pride. Understanding the acronyms is also a really important piece, and it's something that a lot of people have expressed to me. I, in times, have, have been it, confused about and wanting to, to really find a way to broaden our understanding. Why pronouns are integral in, in being another facet of being more inclusive. There's so much to learn. And we have a subject matter expert here with us today that's going to help broaden us in this particular topic, one that we, we love and we can celebrate pride together. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Lisa Konecki. She is the owner of Lisa Konecki LLC. She's got her master's in counseling, counseling and education from the University of Wisconsin. She's experienced in an energetic diversity, equity, and inclusion professional speaker, facilitator, and blogger. She's an expert in counseling and crisis intervention and does a lot of educational leadership and program development. She's an inclusion ally, creating LGBTQ friendly workplaces. She's also the author of Be an Inclusion Ally, the ABCs of LGBTQ. And she's a proud wife of Angela Prestel. Which, fun fact, if anybody didn't know, Angela Prestel and I are from the same DE group and class. 2003, bless, best class ever. So please join me in welcoming <laughs> Lisa Konecki. Hello, welcome. How are you? How do I follow that? I mean, best class ever. I don't even know what to say. Oh, I love, love, love bringing our worlds together. So excited to be here, Brandy. Thank you for having me. Yay. Well, thanks for being here. First, tell us a little bit about you. What inspired you to be the leader that you are today? When you have asked me that question, the first thing that I thought of was I was a safety patrol in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. True story. So when you are the head, thank you, safety patrol of 11 other, other kids in your class and a total of 50 in the school, it went right to my head. It was so amazing. I had a taste of leadership and everything just took off from there. <laughs> so right away, you got the leadership role. You're like, look, power power looks good on me. I'm just going to continue. I'm going to keep rolling with this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So do you think that some of your leadership traits just were innate in that way? Or it's something that you just found yourself, especially with the counseling background that you have, you found good with people, with other individuals. Absolutely. And and with that, the leadership, not that I needed to be the one who was in charge. What I liked was actually connecting and including everyone. And so that was my main mission starting from fourth grade. Then I was a camp director for 20 years, the YMCA and the Girl Scouts. And so it was just fun to be able to bring all sorts of different people together for one purpose. And that was having fun then. Then I was a middle and a high school counselor for 12 years. So dealing with anything from hormones to you name it, you never know what's going to happen. And as a middle school counselor, 
either you love it or you hate it. And I absolutely loved it. And so I took on a lot of leadership roles through school counseling. And with that, then I am now a counselor educator. So I'm a professor and I'm training the next generation of school counselors. And while I was doing that, I was like, you know, I really like this diversity gig. And so I have my degree, uh, a certification in diversity from Cornell University, as well as I'm a certified diversity practitioner. So fancy. Yeah. And in the in the in your studies of that, did you broaden the understanding of inclusion that you were feeling for so many years? I, I did, because especially where I grew up, I grew up on a farm and, you know, it was very rural. It wasn't it wasn't an option to be gay where I grew up. The biggest difference was you were either Lutheran or you were Catholic. And if you weren't one of those, you weren't even in the discussion. And I was forbidden to date a Catholic boy. So I dated a Catholic girl and I married her. <laughs> and, and I think that that was, and then moving to the Washington DC area just opened my eyes to a whole new world. And it was like, wow, it's not just about me. It's about everyone getting along. And then I could use my power, my privilege to advocate for people who didn't have a voice. So I loved it's, it. And I'm still learning today. And that's such a beautiful part about that speaks to you and your leadership in recognizing, even with all the experience that you had and the, the education and the application that you're still uh, learning along the way. And mm -hmm. if we could start with acronyms, because I think that is a, a stumbling block for many. What are some of the top acronyms that every leader should know? So thanks for asking that. It is kind of an alphabet soup. And actually, that's one of the reasons. Oh, look what I have here. So I wrote the book, The ABCs of LGBTQ+. And so when we're talking about it, I wanted an easy reference to exactly what you're saying. What does it mean to be an ally? What does it mean to be an advocate? And so as we take a look at the proper um, LGBT acronym, it goes lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer questioning. And then I like to add the plus. There's a lot of different things that come under that plus. And, and like I said, different terms and identities come out every day. And so one of the things that I would love for people to know now coming up, uh, gender queer is going to be a big term that uh, the generation, I'm a Gen Xer, so anyone who's younger than me might be using non-binary is another one that uh, younger people are identifying as. And then there is another term called BIPOC. It's the letter B-I-P-O-C, and that stands for Black, Indigenous, and People of Color. And so, again, just trying to, um, to widen our um, understanding and welcoming of all people and all identities. Mm -hmm. and that's when a lot. It comes it, yeah, there, there is. And that's what I was saying at the top. I think that's one of the best parts about the community is the diversity that lies within. And so often people will assume that all lesbian and gay understand transgender or all transgender then, of course, naturally understand someone that is homosexual. And that isn't fair to put those kind of assumptions out there. Great point. And, and in fact, you know, when we talk about another term that you'll hear more and more, it's going to be the term cisgender. So it's mm -hmm. the letter C, I, S, gender, cisgender. That's in the book too. So I identify as cisgender, which means that I was born female and I still identify as female. Even though I use the term gay instead of lesbian, that's mm -hmm. how I identify. And the I think the big takeaway for the audience is that it's up to that person how they want to identify and how they want to, you know, say who they are, or maybe they don't want to say who they are to you. So, so again, we can't label someone. And I think Brandy, you said that you can't just look at someone and well, you can, and you can assume, but that's kind of where we get into muddy waters and that's what we don't want to. And so uh, one of the things that I do in my trainings and I'm in my classes is I always start the greeting with um, hello friends, hello scholars, rather than saying ladies and gentlemen, because we have mm -hmm. many more people are identifying not on, you know, the binary of mm -hmm. male, female. So yeah, mm -hmm. good learning. It is, it really is. And it, it takes some habit breaking for people that have had into their language, into their diction for however many years of their lives been, been stuck to a binary pronoun environment. 
And so with Absolutely. that, I know mm -hmm. then personally with some work projects and things, I've been removing any his, her references. So when I redo governance manuals for, for boards, when I redo employment manuals, I'll just eliminate them and just revise it. Things that I wouldn't have even noticed before are now mm -hmm. trying to, to revise. You were about to say? Well, and with that, thank you for that. That's an example. And so um, I was going to speak at the math conference here in Wisconsin mm. before COVID hit. And one of my big things was going to be story problems and using they and them as, as the pronoun in there, because in 2019, the Merriam Webster dictionary actually added they to yeah. the dictionary um, as it was the most looked up word. And so that was added. And then the other mm -hmm. thing, so hooray for you in looking at manuals, one of the resources that is phenomenal for any HR person, any manual, any policy, whatever, it's called Textio, T-E-X-T-I-O. And that will actually, it, it's an app that you can get and it will take you through your forms and will say, you know, is it leaning more masculine? Is it leaning more mm -hmm. feminine on words like using assertive versus collaborative along those lines? So just a little okay. something for your audience. Yeah, absolutely. I love all the tools and tricks. There's people to create those unconscious things that we have going and getting them more to the conscious realm. And so how then does an organization, if they, if all of it feels a bit overwhelming, where, where do they start in the acronym world um, or pronoun kind of world? What a great question. Uh, I think that the, my, usually my first go-to is to ask someone, but only if they are out. So if I'm out, you know that I'm gay, I'm gonna tell you that I'm gay. So not everyone is out. So in, in a business, you're going to want to ask uh, the leadership, you're going to want to ask people who can make things happen. And if in your company you have an ERG, an employee resource group, or an affinity group, if you don't have one for the LGBT world, that's a great place to start. Um, and, you know, taking a look at the policies and have you enumerated out sexual orientation, gender identity, gender nonconforming, and I think those are the big ones that, that are coming up now. You know, do you have all gender bathrooms? Do mm -hmm. you have um, pictures and pamphlets that are repre representative of, I mean, we're just talking about LGBT here, but you could mm -hmm. even have a same-sex couple, one of them, and I don't mean to tokenize, but one of them could be, you know, trying to represent another population, maybe ability. Um, because we talk about gender, race, ability, veteran status, there are a lot of different populations that um, we could talk about when, we, when it talks to inclusion. So back to your original question, where do you start? Um, start in looking at your mission statement, your vision statement, and, and your policies. Are they inclusive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that you're really bringing up the point of doing and conducting an assessment of sorts, seeing where we're at as an organization to begin with, just opening our eyes and looking around at the marketing that's on the walls, the pictures that are on the walls, the things that are in our manuals already, what's happening mm -hmm. already, and then how we can just begin to make a checklist of sorts. Absolutely. And if your individual business isn't ready for that yet, maybe you can start by helping to support or promote a community event or a community organization. Um, lots of resources in my book about how to do that because, you know, if you are in a non safe, non welcoming community, uh, just because Lisa Kennecke says that you should have all of this information out there, it might not be the right time. So how do we um, ease into that? Um, and, and it might be that you just start with October is LGBT History Month. Great. We're mm -hmm. going to talk on October 11th is National Com Day of Coming Out. What does that look like? So it's just, it's including all celebrations, all people, however you can. And if it's not the right time, we'll get you there. Yeah. And thank you for that because you're right. Some organizations wouldn't be ready and we'd hate for people not to do anything because they aren't right. ready for everything. 
Yeah. Exactly. And yeah, the best way that you could start right now is just showing a rainbow. So if you have a rainbow ribbon, that's that's the best place to start, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I actually saw that or read that in one of your blogs or it was in one of the mm-hmm. videos just saying that something as simple as wearing a rainbow ribbon similar and you described it as similarly to wearing a cancer ribbon to just show support visually and you can do it without having to, to speak a voice and to say that I have pride and I'm showing support of, of the community. Yeah, absolutely. I wore my pink today for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yep, you're exactly right. But I will tell you that anyone in the LGBT world, if we see that you have a rainbow, uh, we know that you're a friend, that you're an ally. That's all that it takes. Yeah. And we, you spoke to pronouns. Why are pronouns important? I mean, we talked about having the inclusiveness and in manuals and things, but but why would we want to make sure we do that? Three out of 10 of us know someone who identifies as transgender. And transgender is someone who is born um, in a different body than what they're comfortable with. So um, I I don't speak for all trans people, I don't speak for all cisgender people, but I will tell you that how many people have paved the way for me as a white female to be comfortable as a lesbian. There are different journeys and different routes. And, you know, the time for the transgender people is here. It's now. You're going to see more representation, Laverne Cox included, where people are identifying and becoming their true selves. And so if I can be an ally, and I just have my pronouns and I say she, her, someone who identifies as transgender, that's kind of like the rainbow ribbon. You know, they'll say, that's very cool. Or if someone asks me about my pronouns, I can say, yep, I'm an ally to the transgender community. And so I have my pronouns in my email signature. And next to that, I have the words, what's this hyperlinked? And it takes you to the University of Milwaukee, where you can get a whole litany of information on the use of pronouns. I have my pronouns in my Zoom box Mm -hmm. next to my name. I'll just put she, her. People ask me questions. That's where I go. And I've also done my LinkedIn profile. So those are three things that don't cost any money. And Mm -hmm. I'm showing to the trans community, I'm here, I'm an ally. You know, how can I help you? Because it's especially in the world of business, there are so many um, populations that are overlooked and underserved, and they might be the best talent in the world, but just because they don't conform to what society says they should, they're overlooked. Have you run into any organizations that have put restrictions on people uh, adding their pronouns to signature lines or, or things like that? Have you seen that come across at all? There are some, so I'll I'll go to my education background. So again, school counselor, I've been at the state and the national level for school counselors. So some schools aren't ready for that. And I would say that it's usually the private schools and or the smaller rural school districts where there is a champion. There is a teacher who wants to fight for the right of all students and they just might not be ready. So, yep, I will get those phone calls from Alaska. That's what I have gotten. When it when you talk about communities um, and businesses, I would say that um, I don't want to put all religious institutions into a box, but sometimes that might be a barrier to helping bring the information regarding the trans community to light. So um, I personally haven't gotten pushback on that. Um, and, And I guess the way that I would also look at that is that if I don't get hired to speak or come to speak to their organization, I just don't think they're ready. I think that's all that it is. You know, in time, they'll come around. And, uh, with organizations that maybe are listening or people that are part of organizations that might be ready, should they create a standard where all employees should do it or just make it an option if employees would like to participate? What a great question. I have two answers for that. Uh, My first answer is, you know your company best. I, Lisa Kennecke, can sit here and be an LGBT expert and say, you know, from my Wisconsin accent that I'm telling you right now, I think it's a good idea. 
but please um, maybe you do an assessment of your staff. Maybe that's where you start. Maybe if the CEO is ready to go and they're going to lead the way, fantastic. It might trickle down. I think that it depends on the size. I think that it depends on the readiness because I would much rather have the rights for the LGBT population served on a grander scale than just by having a, a pronoun in an email signature. And I'm not saying that that's not important. Uh, if company, companies are interested, there is actually a free assessment put out by the Human Rights Campaign that they can see kind of, it's called, um, oh, I should have this in the top of my brain. I think it's called the Equality Index. Um, and I'm, I can get that to your listeners or they can email me as well. And um, a free resource that will answer kind of the questions that you're asking right now, Brandy. Great resource. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you for that. And thank you for putting that offer out there. I think that uh, I, the question around pronouns, question around some of these with organizations, some are on the forefront and others don't exactly know how forthright to be in this. And I think that uh, any opportunity that organizations have to show support of diversity within their own community, employee communities, um, that, that to take advantage of those. Um, mm -hmm. So let's let's kind of talk about pride. We talk about the showing the the rainbow and being you know not of being afraid of having that that exterior show support. What does pride in general mean to you? Oh, I love your cup. Yes, everything is rainbow for me. So pride <laughs> means that I I mean something that I am not just a, t a statistic. The fact that we can have two months um, that are dedicated to it are, is fantastic. So October is LGBT History Month and it started in 1994 and was made a national month in 2009 by Barack Obama. So nationally, you know, we have that reputation for the History Month. And um, then we also have Pride Month in June. And the reason it goes into the history is that um, Pride Month started at the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich, uh, New York. And it was a raid that happened on, um, they called themselves drag queens at the time, so they might be either transgender now, um, but the police raided the Stonewall Inn and uh, Marsha, Marsha, P. Jackson, Marsha P. Jackson and Sylvia Romero had had enough and they fought back. And so that's why we have Pride Month always celebrated in June, not always, but usually typically celebrated in June. And again, it's just an opportunity for us to have our voice, for for me to feel included and counted, and that I matter, and that you know, it's I don't have to look like every other lesbian out there, but I know that I have a community, and that's why pride is so important. And uh, we'll just say happy pride to someone, and and again, that's our marginalization. And there are many other groups that have the celebrations on their own as well, but. Pride to me is something that we in the queer community own and and I love it. So yay, pride. Yay. I, I love it too. And I, I love that it has a unique definition and meaning to any everybody that I talk to about it. It's such a, an important expression of of the community and and it's a really powerful statement and can be a powerful statement to show support from all sides. Can you share a story with us? Something fun or funny or crazy or uh oh <laughs> yes. Okay. So I grew up in the 80s and I was our high school mascot. We were the beavers. So I was the beaver. I was also homecoming queen so you can call me Queen Beaver. Oh. <laughs> yep, there's my salute. And my senior year, I was also a candidate for Miss Reedsburg. Yep, there were 10 of us. Okay, so as a candidate of Miss Reedsburg, we celebrated the Butter Festival Parade because Reedsburg is the butter, butter capital of America, a little known fact. In this parade, I was on a convertible 
had my name on the side, 1987. I had on the most beautiful red dress. It was satin and lace. I looked like a giant Valentine. I had long white gloves. It was Farrah Fawcett hair. So this was Kenneke in drag, basically. Kenneke is my last name. And so I was in the parade and they had told me before the parade, Lisa, you can't throw candy. Fantastic. So, of course, I had candy hidden under my dress. And so I'm throwing candy left and right in the parade. And all of a sudden, I hear from a second story window, Kenneke, again, my last name. And I yell up, Rooney, which was her last name, the girl with whom I'm going to be living with at college the next year. We played softball together. She knew that I'd have candy. Took a handful of candy, reeled back whipped the candy, totally hit her in the second story window as my boob popped out of my dress. Oh no! So, so I look down, I'm like, oh, shove my boob back in my dress. I look up and there's a video camera right on me. Now this is 1987. This is not a cell phone. This is not a little mini cam. This is like a big TV camera. And it is the mom of the boy that I'm dating at the time. So I'm like, hi, hi, Mrs. Kerrig. The next day, Todd broke up with me. Oh, I don't no. know if it was because of the boob or that he told me he was gay. That is my story of what my boob can do to boys. That's so great. I mean, I was go, I was just about to say that, oh, thank goodness it was the 80s and there was no YouTube and that kind of thing. But no, 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 you took care of that. My oh, guess is so that funny. that video has won money, you know, back in those shows and my boob is pixelated somewhere in prosperity. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Oh, goodness gracious. So I, I thought also when you started with the fact that you were called the beavers, that the story was going to go sit down some sort of terrible path around the beavers, too. But we'll have to save those stories Beaver. for next time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so share a bold action item or takeaway for our listeners. The bold action item takeaway would be to shift from a small A ally to a capital A ally, whether you show a rainbow, whether you um, volunteer for a group, whether you change your pronouns, we would love to have you do that. You could buy my book. It's on sale. And just speak up. Speak up for those who don't have a voice. If you hear a homophobic joke, just say not cool. And let's start teaching our young people what different families can look like and not to just stare, but to educate ourselves. So whatever you want to do to show that you're an ally, please do it. Yes, I love that. Thank you so much for that. And uh, answer this question for me. If I could, I would blank every day. If I, if I could do something every day, oh my gosh, I would eat without gaining weight. Oh, I, I, I'm with you. I'm absolutely with you. Tacos typically is my go-to for the answer to that question. I love these yeah. tacos. Um, and the world would be a better place if? People thought before they talked. Yeah, you're right. And how can people get a hold of you? Well, you saw my website, so you can go to lisakenicky.com, L-A-S-A-K-O-E, and as a Nancy, E-C-K-E dot com. I'm working on it. It's still a work in progress. I'm also at Lisa from Wisconsin. Did you hear that accent? Lisa from Wisconsin mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Would love to help however I can. It could be businesses. I'd love to speak. Whatever you need, my friends. That's what I'm here for. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here today, for sharing your knowledge with us. You also have a TEDx talk out there talking and sharing your story. I appreciate you so much in shedding the light on how to be a better ally and the things that we can do and sharing some of the ABCs. And there's so much more to learn in your book. So we urge everybody that's listening and watching to check that out as well. So thank you so much. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you, Brandy. This was wonderful. And let's head out to our shout out. Randy, this is Grace with Star Technology in China, wishing you good luck with the strategic hot box. 祝您心想事成,万事如意! 加油! Oh, thank you so much to Grace.
place that's sending us a shout out in China. And I wish I knew what this, what this word was there at the end. Maybe it's the kick ass part of things, but thank you to Grace. And thank you so much uh, to Lisa for sharing her knowledge with us as well. Now it's time for us to look at our top three kick ass. As we learn to become a better ally, number one is to know the ABCs of LGBTQ+. So let's know our acronyms and understand what each of those things mean and how we can listen better and learn more and understand each other uh, to the fullest. And number two is to respect pronouns. It makes people feel more included. It makes people feel like they are respected and understood. Pronouns are the smallest way, the smallest gesture that we can do. So easy for all of us to do it, to show that we love and respect one another. And number three is to live pride, to show pride, to live pride, and to show the individuals around you that you support the community. That's how we can learn to be a better ally, our top three kick-ass. Thank you again to Lisa. Thank you again to Grace. Another really fun episode talking about uh, diversity and talking about the depths. There's so much to learn. I feel like every time we finish an episode around diversity, I think about all the other things that I'd like to learn about. So we'd also love to hear from you on other topics that we can cover. So hit us up, strategichopbox.com or any social media, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, anywhere. Hit us up. We'll be there. Until I see you again, get out there and kick some ass.